Warning, the following footage may contain blue cards. Viewer discretion is advised. Untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a mono blue mind control deck titled Is For Me as we're gonna try to steal the opponent's creatures using Attempted by the Auric, a 4 mana sorcery that lets us gain control of up to one target creature or planeswalker if the opponent controls with mana value 3 or less. And then we've got the full playset of Lol Mage's Domination, accent triple blue for a sorcery, costs 3 generic mana less to cast if the opponent has 8 or more cards in their graveyard, and then we gain control of target creature with mana value X. So we've got these 8 mind control effects, but to enable the domination we also need to be a bit of a mill deck. So we're a mind control deck disguised as a mill deck, and to enable domination at 1 mana we've got the full playset of Merfolk Secret Keeper, can mill the opponent for 4 with Venture Deeper, and then we get an 0-4 blocker afterwards. Opt is a cheap cantrip that lets us cry 1 and draw a card, great in combination with our Teferi's Tutelage, which will mill the opponent for 2 whenever we draw a card, and it also draws a card and lets us discard when it enters the battlefield. Then we've got the full playset of Ruin Crab, which mills the opponent for 3 whenever land enters the battlefield under our control, and that's also the reason why we're playing Fabled Passage in a mono blue deck. We've got two copies of Stern Dismissal as a cheap bounce spell for creatures or enchantments. Then at 2 mana we've got Maddening Cacophony, which can enable domination all by itself by milling the opponent for 8, can also be kicked later in the game. Then at 3 mana, besides the full playset of Teferi's Tutelage, we have a few counter spells with a Didn't Say Please that also mills the opponent for 3. And then we've got our mind control effects and the full playset of Into the Story, which will draw us 4 cards and cost 3 generic mana less to cast if the opponent has 7 or more cards in their graveyard. And then besides our 4 copies of Fabled Passage, we have 18 basic islands and 2 copies of Mystic Sanctuary, which can potentially get back one of our instants or sorceries from the graveyard and put it back on top of our deck. So that's another way to buy back our mind control effects. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing off against the Lurus deck. And yeah, we've got a decent hand. Could use some card draw effects or some mind control effects. But early game's taken care of. Alright, Tutelage also good. So I don't want to play the Crab yet. Since I don't want to expose it to removal, so we'll just mill for four. So our opponent's a mono black sacrifice deck, and yeah, a card like Call of the Death Dweller can definitely punish a mill deck by getting back some cheap creatures. Cards like Archfiend's Vessel can potentially turn into 5 5 demons as well. Turn to Blood Sky Berserker. So, Crab. And then I probably play an untapped land, so I can play a Secret Keeper. As opposed to Fabled Passage. Another one. And a dead weight on the Rune Crab. Right, so this also has Menace until end of turn. So I wouldn't be able to single block it. Time for Tutelage. Although. Could also steal one of the Berserkers with Domination, which I don't mind here. Could have also waited a turn to try and put an extra count from Berserker ourselves by casting a second spell, but then the Berserker most likely would have been tapped. Opponent kills their own Berserker with a Mars Grasp, gets in for 5. 
Yeah, the Berserkers are putting in a lot of work, but our opponent's finally empty-handed. So time for probably Tutelage into Fable Passage in case we find another crab we can maybe wait on the fetch line. Stern Dismissal also excellent. So now probably ditch the island. And then we'll pass it back with the plan of using Dismissal on the larger Berserker. Opponent puts Lurus in hand, that's also going to be its own problem. And no shortage of creatures to get back, including Archfiend's Vessel that we mentioned earlier. So we'll block the 3-3. Three, three. And then fetch and bounce to 5-5. Five, five. So that'll buy us some time. So we'd love to find an into the story to combo with our tutelage. Or a mind control effect to steal Lurus. For now, play Tutelage. And there's our Domination. So, probably better off keeping the Secret Keeper since it mills for four. Sure. So our opponent is down to 21 cards now. And we've got the perfect answer for Lurus. I'll even be able to replay Creature from the Graveyard. So I could consider chumping with uh, Secret Keeper here, or the Ruin Crab. There's Lurus. And I'm expecting an Archfiend's Vessel. Instead of dead weight on the rune cramp. I think that's a pretty good outcome, all things considered. Now they might still have a village rights in hand to sacrifice Lurus in response to domination. But otherwise we're looking good. All right, that worked. Get to play the crab. Islands enables landfall. And add another secret keeper to the board. And now the opponent doesn't have an evasive demon beating us down. So we can block the berserker. Opponent down to 13 cards, so it doesn't take much. Another Berserker. And a Mogus's Favor. So I'll double block with the Secret Keepers if that attacks. And we can replay one with Lurus. Secret Keeper over the top. So we mill for four, mill for another four, so we're very close to the finish line. So yeah, we just need to survive one more turn. Three cards left. And our opponent concedes. Sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Question is, do we play a tapped Sanctuary on turn one or hope to draw an extra island so we can maybe play it on turn four, getting back 
an instant or sorcery from the graveyard. Now that we drew Fabled Passage, I probably just play this. Or I could fetch on turn one with Fabled Passage instead. Sure, I guess we'll do that. And then keep the Sanctuary to get back either a Dismissal or a Cacophony. Opponent going all in here, so we can punish them with Stern Dismissal. Could also eventually steal the Alsaid. Yeah, I guess for now we'll just Cacophony enable our various cards in hand. Let's point to Green-White Enchantment Aura deck. Could potentially mill the Sentinel's Eyes that they can escape as they play one from their hand. So yeah, we can just steal the Alsaid here with our Domination. See if they have a Carmetra's Blessing to protect. Or they can sacrifice the Alsaid so we don't gain control of it. Sure. Archon of Sun's Grace, also pretty scary. So, yeah, I guess I can bounce the Archon. Play Tutelage, although I'm probably just getting back Domination here. So I can play Tutelage before playing Sanctuary. And... What do I get rid of? Maybe the Cacophony? Get back Domination. And if I bounce the Archon, they might not replay it, but then we're probably winning that game. So I'll bounce the Archon before they make any tokens with Constellation. Also, if their plan was to Escape Sentinel's Eyes, we could have bounced Archon a response, but if they play an enchantment creature like Alsaid, then uh, that would not necessarily work out. Alright, put and replace Archon. We'll steal it. And pass the turn. So Dustin Champion resolves, so that could potentially get out of hand, but no shortage of answers, including our Tempted by the Auric, which can also steal it. So that's the card we want to find the most alongside another Domination. All right, and there we go. And I guess I'll start attacking. Play the Fable Passage, but I don't have to sacrifice it yet. In case we draw a Rune Crab, opponent does have a second champion. Can escape Sentinel's Eyes. Time for an into the story. Tutelage also going to trigger Constellation here with both the Champion and Archon. And yeah, I think our opponent's pretty dead here. Maybe not quite this turn, but very close to it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. We'll be looking for additional lands with our opts. And then we can enable into the story. Opponent on some sort of Mardu sacrifice deck. Could also just be pure Rakdos. As we see tokens to combo with the Awaken the Blood avatar. Alright, I guess uh, this is Secret Keeper plus Keep Up. Opt and Dismissal. Bastion, we could bounce, but then they get to make another token. So, 
I think we just bounce one of the tokens here. Alrighty, so we can mill for eight. Or we could decide to play an extra Secret Keeper to have more blockers out. Since we'll enable the into the story for next turn anyway. We did mill another escape creature. Keep Fable Passage in hand for as long as possible in case we pick up a crab. So our mind control effect's not great against any tokens, but could be effective against an escaped Voice Rider. Opponent gonna draw two. And draws two again. Well, at least they're not pressuring our life total too much. And I think I'm happy keeping that one. Can steal an escaped strider. And we'll pass a turn with Into the Story available. Another Bastion, okay. And that's it. Another into the story. For now, don't really need to get anything back from the graveyard. So I think we just play Island, keep up Dismissal, and another into the story. Village rights. Triggers Bastion twice. And then we're hoping the opponent presents some creatures we can steal. Looks like Strider might be getting escaped here. So in response, we'll bounce the Bastion so they can sag the goats to hurt us as much. Then we can draw a bunch. And next turn I can go Ruin Crab, Fable Passage, steal the Strider. And the Rune Crab also makes it so the Scry from the Strider isn't very effective. And then I think I'm just gonna fetch now. I could keep the Fable Passage uncracked in case we draw another Rune Crab. It's kind of playing a game of chicken in case the opponent has instant speed removal. So I'd rather just do it now and pass it back. Next turn I can Mystic Sanctuary put back another into the story, perhaps. And I can even kick a Cacophon if I want. Opponent has 27 cards left, so kicking it is still beneficial. Can be a plum to draw a few cards and drain us. That's fine. Could also decide to scry by sacking a secret keeper. I think I'm happy keeping those back. Opponent will have to discard to hand size. And yeah, kicked cacophony sounds reasonable. And Croxa we can easily steal as well. And we'll put back and into the story, I think. And mill for four. So five cards left for the opponents, probably no point in attacking. 
And we'll see if they can kill us here. Scorpion. Okay, that potentially represents 4 damage. Moist Rider escaped. So that's 2 more damage. So we're up to 6. And awaken the Blood Avatar. Alright, so that's 8 damage. And when this attacks, we deal 3 more damage. So yeah, I think that's us taking Exaxes. Have to sacrifice a creature. And there's no way to avoid the Avatar killing us here. It's unlike Croxa, where we can discard a card onto the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Just need to hit one or two land drops. Put an early secret keeper to protect our life total. Opponent on a blank green, kind of mid-rangey deck. So they might have some juicy creatures for us to steal. Assuming we can hit our third land drop. And yeah, double tutelage and double into the story can almost win the game by itself. No third line just yet, but at least Secret Keeper enables domination and into the story. Opponents with cards like Binding the Old Gods, which can also destroy tutelage, so all things considered, maybe this worked out better. There's our lane now. And yeah, we'll play a tutelage looking for an extra lane. Didn't think I'll be able to keep up a counter spell since I'm probably going to play another tutelage next turn if we don't draw land. And then if a scary creature shows up, like an Elder Gergroth. We'll need to have our dominations at the ready. Another visionary for now. Into a Temple of Malady. Not very relevant how they scry, given that we're gonna mill them anyway. Alright, more tutelages. They are pretty good at multiples. Up to draw. Alright, I'll discard one domination. Keep the cheaper opts, which also combines well with tutelage. So your opponent's about halfway. Eliminates the secret keeper. And yeah, hopefully dodge something big and scary like an Ugin. Go blank makes me discard two. At this point I might not need domination anymore. And then probably discard one into the story, keep two Lich opts. That way if we don't draw land I can still go two Lich if we draw land opt. And a single into the story with triple two Lich is probably good enough. Alright, another go blank. In that case, I probably keep into the story and just hope to draw land. We did. And I should probably main phase into the story in case they have any way of destroying the two lodges at instant speed, although can't think of too many. So we get to mill for a healthy 16, and our opponent packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. 
All right, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Could use a bit of card draw or another mill engine card. Facing off against the mutate combo deck, it looks like, with open the omen paths. So milling that is actually a disadvantage in the matchup. So play Sacred Keeper, can opt. And then hoping to find something like a Teferi's Tutelage. Our mind control effects should be pretty effective at least. Yeah, I guess I'll take another one. Dismissal also good. So we're hoping the opponent presents a creature for us to steal. And if their plan is to mutate, we will eventually see one. Opponent decides to discard to hand size, I guess not to their own volition here, just missing their land drops. So if they play a non-creature, we can counter it. If they play a creature, we can steal it. Opponent finally hits their land drop, but it comes into play tapped, so... Would have preferred for the opponent to actually just uh, play a creature earlier. But so be it. Four mana. And our opponent's gonna pass, maybe waiting to play a creature with counter spell backup. So we're not doing much in the meantime. If we had a tutelage milling them, they wouldn't really be able to sit back. It's gonna be a sea dasher octopus. Um, sure. Can block it with a secret keeper for now. And we've got two pieces of instant speed interaction to make sure we don't get comboed out by Vadrock plus open the omen paths, which can potentially let them play out their entire hand. Five mana, so they haven't missed a land drop since that, uh, Third Mist Land. And it's gonna be Birth to grab another Plains. So we're going just patiently setting up. And there's Vodrock just hard cast. So I think we're happy enough stealing Fodrock, and then we'll still have our counter spell available. And Fodrock is kind of the key to the opponent's deck, so it also gives us a flying threat to start beating down. No need to sacrifice Fable Passage unless we need to. Caster didn't say please in case we pick up a rune crab later. So if our opponent has another Vodrock plus maybe a negate, they could counter my interaction and we could be in trouble. It's gonna be Seize the Spoils discarding a Dreamtail Heron. That resolves. I'm gonna keep my counter spell for a key creature like Vodrock being mutated. And then end of turn we'll opt. The Raven's Warning is fine. We can easily block the 1-1 one, one bird. Another opt I guess is fine, just lets me scry again. Don't need islands. Cacophony. And Rune Crab. So I can play Rune Crab. And then probably just keep up Didn't Say Please and Stern Dismissal. And then wait to maybe kick Cacophony. Sure. And then again, probably no reason to fetch Passage yet in case we draw another Crab. Now the third chapter from Raven's Warning can let them search for a card, but then we can just mill it once they put it on top of their deck. Opponent tries to mutate onto the bird. So I could bounce the bird, but then Vodrock will still hit the battlefield. So I think I just counter Vodrock, and then if they respond, I'll dismissal. 
That worked. So we don't have a ton of instant speed interaction left, and the opponent's deck can potentially win in one big turn once it starts comboing, so need to find another dismissal or didn't say please, or just need to mill the opponent out before they can combo off. Opponent goes for another Vandrock, and uh, that resolves. So, I'll untap. And then we can attack with Vandrock before stealing it again. Since one of them will go away to the legendary rule. And then we can pass. Hold Cacophony to Plate Kicked. So we've dealt with a fair share of Vondrox so far. And it's going to be Snapdax mutated onto the Octopus. So that's going to deal four. Yeah, let's just bounce the Octopus. Of course, it is still going to trigger next turn when they mutate onto it. But it buys us some time. Okay, Domination can steal Snapdax, so that's a nice solution. Convert mana cost is 4. And then, uh, not sure if the opponent searched for a card with the Raven's Warning. But uh, I guess we'll fetch. My opponent did maybe search for that in the gates. Stay back, and next turn maybe play kicked Cacophony, mill for 14. Iluna. Finds a Cobwarden. And so I'll take 6. So we want to play this kick before playing a lance. Opponent down to 10 cards in library, and we'll play defense. All right, it's going to be close. Could use an into the story here to refuel. Could use another domination to steal Iluna. And if our opponent has another Vodrock, we're in trouble. But we can have a look at their graveyard to see if we milled any. So there are still two Vodrocks in circulation potentially. Mutating onto Luna has its uh, risks as well, with only 9 cards left in library. I'll take 6. Opponent mutates onto Cup Warden, so they're gonna start going wide with 1-1 one, one tokens. And they still have Octopus, they can mutate onto Cup Warden to make even more tokens. So yeah, it looks like we're gonna die here to the swarm of cats with lifelink. Put them down to six cards. See Perforos, maybe the finisher for their combo. And yeah, sadly it flooded out a bit in the end. Didn't draw enough card draw effects to keep fueling our hand. And the old adage, screw beats flood, turns out to be true here. So if they attack with a team, can put Vodrock on a Luna, still take three trample, three blockers, so that's enough to win the game. So opponent doesn't need to do anything else. Mutates the Vodrock onto Cobwarden anyway. Can replay something from the graveyard now. So they can potentially mutate more by casting Opened Omen Pants. Unsubstantiate will do it as well. Gets back Vodrock. And that's game. On to the next one.
All right, we're on the play, facing off against a Giruda deck. And our hands, okay. Could use some early mill cards to enable domination and into the story. So that's what we'll be looking for with this opt. And the fairy tutelage is difficult to turn down when we have an into the story in hand. And cacophony is perfect, okay. Mill for eight. Now opponent might be playing with bookworm. And yeah, there we see it already. So bookworm, excellent way to counter the mill deck by putting it back into the deck before taking your draw step, even with an empty library. So that gives the opponent an extra lifeline. Turn to Cobra, good start. And we're hoping to draw into an extra land. All right. Probably get rid of one of the tempted, since Domination should be able to do the same job and potentially steal a larger creature as well. So four mana, turn three into a Thassa. All right, so probably go for Tempted on the Cobra. Potentially delay a big play from them. And then next turn, we'll see if we want to enter the story or domination. Sanctuary ideally gets back into the story. So we can play that first. Charming Prince can scry, although scrying against the mill deck is not incredibly useful. Fable Passage would have been quite scary with a Lotus Cobra in play, could have allowed a 6 mana play already. It's gonna be another Cobra. Alrighty, so... Probably go for main phase into the story. And then get it back. All the fair opponents gonna play Giruda next turn from hand, then they can mill the card I put on top. So that's something else to keep in mind. But of course they're not guaranteed to have a Giruda in hand, so we milled two already, so there's probably only one left in the deck. So it seems safe to go for an into the story this turn. And then get it back. And then we might have to find some instant speed ways to mill the opponent, maybe an opt or into the story with tutelage in play, or a fetch land with a rune crab, so we can mill the bookworm after they put it back. Make blue mana, and we'll mill. And probably find to play secret keeper as opposed to milling for four. Alright, so two bookworms already in graveyards. Opponent puts Giruda in hand, so we can expect to see it next turn. So 19 cards remaining, and uh, yeah, we probably cast into the story now. I'm going to hang on to Fable Passage in the hopes of combining it with the Rune Crab so we can mill those bookworms later. And then for now... Opponent has 11 cards remaining. 
Yeah, I think we hang on to domination. Just mill for a bunch. There's a third bookworm. Yeah, if I can force them to put back bookworm instead of casting Giruda, that's also useful, but not quite at that point. But yeah, casting Giruda is gonna empty their library. So Giruda's unlikely to hit anything relevant. And then it's just a matter of being able to get through those bookworms. All right, they did hit a Dream Trawler, so that's pretty strong. And Dream Trawler is actually also a discard outlet for Bookworm. So they can keep getting back Bookworm and then discarding it with Dream Trawler to prevent decking. So they might have actually locked us out of the game. Into the story can fizzle one bookworm, but they've got two, and they've got the mana to put two back. But I can maybe draw into an opts with the into the story. So that's the hope here. Uh, if I go for domination on Dream Trawler, they just discard a card from hand. So that doesn't accomplish anything. I can maybe steal Thassa with a domination. So if I do that, that's four mana. I guess with Fabled Passage, I'll have the mana thanks to Cobra. And then I can still enter the story plus opts in the opponent's uh, draw step. Doesn't matter what we flicker. Opponent puts back Bookworm. Cast into the story. And there's an opt. So opponent has to put back another bookworm, we opt in response, and then they will be milled out. Alright, GG's. Opponent almost managed to claw their way back. So yeah, need those instant speed card draw effects in combination with Tutelage to get there. So overall, we got to steal quite a few creatures in today's video, but uh, as you know, mill deck's not the most pleasant deck to play against, so, you know, play it with caution. But that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.